What's going on, guys? It's DJ Lee with Producer Hacks. Let's get right to it. What's going on, guys? Welcome back. It's DJ Lee with Producer Hacks. Um, we're going to go ahead and jump right into this one. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about master buses and why we need those in our mixes, all right? When I talk about master buses, I am not talking about actually mastering a track, but in fact, this master bus track right here. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up a brand new track. We're going to go ahead and we're going to hit track up top. If you're using Pro Tools, hit track. You can go ahead and hit new. You're going to go to stereo. Once this pops up, you're going to go ahead and hit stereo. You're going to go ahead and you're going to slide out to master track, master track, stereo, not mono but stereo master track we can only have that in mastered uh stereo form all right now what the master track will do is it will allow us to get a glimpse of our master levels our uh master meter which is this right here how loud and how quiet our dynamics are when we apply that limiter what is going to happen to that actually that actual mastered audio that last that that last that last overall sound that we're gonna hear. Before we send it off for mastering, our mix goes through this last channel, which is called our master bus. Now, the master bus is very important because you can go ahead and you can apply a compressor or a limiter during the mixing stage just to get a glimpse of what it's gonna sound like. You can add a maximizer just to get a glimpse of how the mastering uh, session will turn out. Now, on your master track, you don't wanna go, you don't, you don't wanna start compressing too hard, limiting too hard adding that maximizer going for wideness you don't want to go ahead and start creating fades and stuff like that on your master bus you don't want that that's that's going to be later on that's going to be in your actual mastering part of your sessions so after you finish your mixing stage once again you do not master your audio in that same session you just create a master bus so you can see your final levels because every track it, go, it has its, its own output so this one right here is going to have an output one and two same thing with audio two is gonna go to output one and two. Same thing with this music tracks go out to the output one and two, and that's gonna be the input. Is this master this master bus? That's its input. All right. Now everything will flow to that track, and you will get a glimpse like I just previously said, and then you'll be able to pretty much just see what's going on with your sound, with your track. All right. Also, when you're doing when you're using a master track. Be sure to zoom in on these master meters. You can check it out on any any DAW system. You'll be able to see exactly what this master bus track is going to show you. And let me just see if I can scroll down. You can control that master audio, cut it all the way off, bring it back in. And whatever you do to this track right here will affect every audio. So if I were to add a uh, reverb on this track, Every single instrument, every single vocal, every single sound, the samples, it will be affected by that reverb. Now, a cool thing about these bus tracks is you can do the same thing with uh, uh, with your instruments. You can make a bus track for your instruments and then export, have your output of that, of that bus to the master track. So whatever buses you set up, whatever regular audio tracks, whatever stereo tracks, no matter how many buses and how many chains you set up, they all will output to your master bus. That master bus is the last output, the last the last track before you hit your mastering stage. You send it off to get mastered or you do your mastering yourself. Do not, I repeat, do not master your audio on your master track. All right? During your mixing stage. All right? Now, that's pretty much the gist of what a master bus is there's no real panning automation you can do on that master bus there's plugins you could always pull up on that on that um master bus and create some type of panning automation some type of phasing thing stereo widening but you don't want to do too much of that during your mixing stage that's just for you to get a glimpse of what it's going to sound like so before you send your final export, before you bounce all your stems and all your files, make sure you clear out your master bus track. Clear it out, whatever plugins you have, make them inactive. Don't, do not just bypass them, make them all inactive. We don't want anything to be just 
glimmering in the background and affecting your vocals, your instruments, or anything, all right? That's pretty much it for this session. And as always, stay tuned for more. I have more coming for you guys. I just dropped some more music. This is Copper Coin out now on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, uh, Amazon Music, whatever you can think of is going to be up there. Go ahead and check that out. Once again, it's called Copper Coin by It's DJ Lee. Until next time, guys, I'm out. It's sad that I'm gone every winter. Keep it real, different vibe. I was gone since December, uh. God damn, I'm gone.